Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan Hill and I am the author of the middle grade graphic novel Tales of a 7th Grade Lizard Boy. And today I thought I would show you around my tiny studio here in Portland, Oregon and then maybe talk a little bit about my process and how I make my comics. Um, I guess if that sounds okay, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, to start off, let's do a quick um, 360. You'll see that my um, studio is not very big um, because I can just stand here and rotate around and show you everything. But I don't actually need a whole lot of space anymore because I primarily do all of my work um, here on my iPad um, and my computer. Um, and what's nice about my iPad is, I guess, sort of before the pandemic, um, I could take it anywhere and work anywhere. I could work when I was teaching at school. I could go out and see friends. Um, nowadays, it just means I can take it from my office to the couch in the living room. Um, but let's go ahead and start back here. So here are the... Um, it's my bookshelf in my office. Uh, this isn't the only bookshelf in the house, but you can see that it has the classic too many books because there's two rows of books on each shelf. Um, and then up here I have the obligatory artists, weird knickknacks and toys and odds and ends. Um, there's a little Spider-Man. There's a ninja in an oven mitt. Um, and then I have um, some posters and here is sort of the office IT table um, and this table itself is has a really tragic story. Um, this is a drafting table or um, it's actually a light box. It's from the 50s. It's from an old government warehouse. My uncle used to live here and he worked for the USGS and he, um, they were cleaning out a warehouse and he asked me if I wanted this old light table. And I said, yes. And so if you don't know what a light table is, it is, you'll see that there's this glass here. Um, and I can actually flip it on if you give me a second. Um, and so what this is great for is if you're working analog, um, whether you're drafting um, or making comics like I would do, is it lets you see through multiple pieces of paper. So if you're doing cut and paste, tracing, um, a lot of that stuff, it's um, a really, really, really handy tool. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I, I said I just use my iPad anymore. Um, so it doesn't get used. It's sort of relegated to being sort of the IT desk um, which is a shame, but it's just such a beautiful, cool piece of furniture that I can't bear to get rid of it. Um, and maybe one of these days I'll get back to doing some more analog work. But, um, and then here is sort of my main work desk. And like I said, you'll see I have my iPad and my computer there. Um, and I think I already talked about this a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about it a little more later, but sorry, I'm not used to um, having people around. Um, so... Here are some more odds and ends and books. And you'll actually, you can see this picture here. It's actually a picture of me when I was in sixth grade. Um, and so if you've read the book, um, you might recognize that goofy Halloween costume um, that Dung was wearing. And so that was actually inspired by uh, my leftovers Halloween costume when I was a kid. Um, and then we have this beautiful painting here. Um, that my colorist Nisa Oru did after we finished the book and now it's become one of my most prized possessions on the wall there. Um, and then this is just, well, this is supposed to be my bulletin board um, slash calendar, but you can see that gets used about as much as uh, the light table does because I do all of sort of my calendar stuff digitally anymore. But um, yeah, so that's, that's the studio. Again, not super exciting, but again, um, I don't need a whole lot of space because this is where I kind of do everything. But if that, yeah, that's okay. Let's go ahead and I can talk a little bit about how I make my comics. All right, so like I was saying earlier, um, I do all of the sort of finished drawing of the book, making of the book. Most of it is done on my iPad um, digitally, all right? But everything I do starts analog, and analog is still a very, very important part of my process. So you'll see here, I have this little notebook, uh, miscellaneous comics. Um, and so this was sort of before Lizard Boy was a book or even was sold as a book, um, and it was just an idea. And so on these pages here, you'll see 
me sort of playing around with maybe what the characters might look like. Um, so here's a very early version of Tommy, um, his lizard um, version. Um, here is um, his mom, a uh, very early Tiffany. You can see they look very, very different. But what I'm doing here is I'm just sketching out ideas and I'm trying to turn the ideas I have in my head and making them concrete. And so I, I need to do that thinking analog. Um, and I, I'm sure you hear lots of other um, cartoonists and artists and illustrators talk about that, about how important that is. Um, and so you'll also notice for me that I'm working in pen. Um, and that is just another way, uh, I guess, to keep myself honest in, in this idea of not being worried about making mistakes um, and just getting ideas out. You'll see that I'm like Xing out some characters. I'll do like I'll start this this head shape didn't even get finished before I decided it wasn't good enough and then I'd switch over to something. Um, but it just lets me keep ideas coming instead of trying to hold on, try to get that perfect idea first right away because I, I don't think that's really possible. I think you need to really feel things through. Um, and you'll oh this is funny. You'll actually I hate character design. I don't actually hate character design. I think I was just frustrated. Um, at the moment, but again, here's some more. Yeah, here's some more characters. So, so yeah, so that's a really important part of the process is just sort of getting, getting things out of my head and making them concrete. Um, and then after that, after I've sort of felt through some of the visuals, what I'll do is I will actually start writing. And when I write, I don't actually write on a computer. What I'll do is I'll do the same thing that I was doing when I was sketching is I'll work analog. So this is actually, I think, from the very beginning of the book, but um, you'll see that these are just pieces of typing paper that um, I think uh, I'll cut them in half, I guess. Why do I cut them in half? I think um, that's a question I just asked myself. I think it's because it's a little more digestible to have it like this. Um, but I'll just sort of write down what I think happens in the book. Um, and you'll see, again, I'm writing with pen because I'm not being precious with it. If I don't like something, I'll cross it out and then I will um, rewrite it. And, you know, I've tried writing on a computer, like typing on a computer, but I just don't get anything done because what happens is if I type and I don't like, it's so easy to go back and rewrite something. Um, if I type a line and it's not what I feel like is perfect, I'll just delete it. And so I can have written for hours and hours and hours and not get anything done. Whereas with this, I can just, I just like, it's like stream of consciousness, just like letting things go. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, and then what, how, what happens is once I'm done with this, this is just, I think, part of a chapter. Once I'm done with this, I will go in and so this is in that same chapter, but I will type it up and I'll make it a little more presentable, even though I'm not showing this to anybody. Um, what I'm doing is, um, this is a little bit more formal of a script, I guess you might call it, even though it's just for me. Um, but you can see what I'll do is then, once I have that script written out, I'll go through and I'll break it down, um, page one, page two, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll figure out how, where I want the action to happen. Um, and then I'll do this first draft of thumbnails. And again, you'll, so you'll see I have moved a pencil with the thumbnails. And these thumbnails, what they are, they're just tiny drawings that let me um, spend just like real quickly, one, 30 seconds, maybe one minute, maybe five minutes, um, and get the ideas down. And the reason I do that is because if I just sat down and started drawing a page, if I didn't like the way something turned out, I would have wasted hours and hours. It's, it's almost like a blueprint. Um, to They don't just you know, to like a building, like when you're making a building, you don't just sit down and like make the building. You have all these plans and preparation that goes into it. And so that's what sort of the thumbnails are. And so this is where I do my first draft of thumbnails. And so um, I did something a little bit different for Lizard Boy. So if it's okay, I'm going to show you something from a previous book that I did. So this is from a book I did with my friend MK called Wild Weather. And this, this she wrote the script, so I didn't have to write it out, but you'll see that I have this, um, I would do my thumbnail process, this first draft of thumbnails, all right? But what I, what I used to do is then I would do tighter thumbnails on a sheet like this. And so you'll see that they're a little bit bigger and I'm doing four to a page and it's a little more formal. These sort of marks here sort of let me know where I can break the panels to have them be the right proportions. Um, and so you'll see that I do these a lot so this is like a second draft. 
but these are pretty tight. Um, and so what I decided to do with Lizard Boy is I decided that I was going to try to do my thumbnails digitally and see if I can still keep this looseness to them while um, having all the benefits of working digitally. All right. And so it was a fine line that I was going to try to walk, but um, if you'll give me one second to set up the um, my iPad, I'll show you how those turned out. All right, and so here we have the, um, hope you can see that okay, the, the digital thumbnails that I did. Um, and you can see that I'm trying to keep them, if we take a look at these, I'm trying to keep that looseness and that energy um, and not getting so bogged down and working digitally and getting it perfect, all right? But what is nice about doing this is I could do it a little bit tighter. So let's take this, like, let's maybe take this, this page as an example, all right? And so we can actually see down here, this is the very rough draft of this thumbnail. And so this ends up being the tighter draft of this thumbnail, all right? And um, you can see that a lot of things stayed the same, but then I'm actually gonna come over here and show you what I could do then working digitally. I mean, I would do this when I worked analog too, as I'd scan it in, but I can basically place it in the page. This is sort of the working file on the finished page and I can drop it in there. And then you can see how, if I do the first, if I turn on the first panel, I'm just tightening, tightening it up. And it, it really is just a time saver. And that if I can get these thumbnails by, by doing my thumbnails digitally instead of analog, what it does is it lets me get it as tight as I can while still being a thumbnail, or it kind of serves as like a thumbnail and a pencil and pencils at the same time. So if that is the case, what it lets me do is it lets me just ink over these really tight thumbnails that are sort of a hybrid of thumbnails and pencils. And what that does is that ends up saving me time because I don't have to pencil anymore. I mean, some of these pages, like I think this one I did maybe pencil a little bit because it's such a detailed drawing, but it, you know, some people ask me why I work digitally instead of analog because I actually really miss working analog. And the reason being is that I can just get things done faster working digitally. Um, and because I can skip this, I can almost skip a whole phase of penciling um, when working like this. And that saves me, you know, that cuts off a couple hours each page. And then you think, you know, 260 pages on a book, how many days does that save you? So um, that's sort of that process um, for me. And it was a little bit tricky um, to get used to, to try to keep it um, as loose as I could while still, um, you know, still being thumbnails. And of course there is a risk because then I send these, you know, I'll send these thumbnails, I'll letter these, these thumbnails and I'll send them to my editor. And what, you, there is a chance that something is going to need to be redrawn or re-edited, pages are needed to be, going to be cut out, um, or pages are going to need to be added. But really because I feel so comfortable enough, I've been doing this for so long, that um, my, I'm pretty confident that these thumbnails are going to be pretty tight. And so it's a little bit of a gamble, but majority of the book is going to be in pretty good shape. And so that's still going to end up saving me a whole lot of time. All right, I think that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the little studio tour and me talking a little bit about how I make my work. Um, and I also hope you enjoy Tales of the Seventh Grade Lizard Boy. All right, take care.